The Tangent Egg Podcast is aimed at a mature audience. It contains themes that are not appropriate for all listeners. It's important to note that we are not experts. We routinely have no idea what we're talking about and are just three idiots sitting around a table. Listener discretion is advised. Welcome to Tangent Egg Podcast. I'm Seth and as always with me are Swoosh and John Doe. Hello. Hello. Right, so first up, uh, Scumbag McGee, Dr. Disrespect, reckons he's going to be coming back. I don't see how he's going to do that. Like, the entire internet's just going to hunt him down for this. Well, I mean, like, he's played, like, he, he's kind of playing it off, too, which I think is, like, a bad idea if that oh, was yeah. what you were going to do, because yeah. he's, one, he's deleted his original post, which, I'm sorry, man, the internet does not nah. forget. Once it's online, it's online and forever. And particularly deleting it makes everyone go, why'd you delete it? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, I'm just going to remember it harder now. People had screenshots of the different versions when he kept editing it back and forth. Like, yeah. you can't have shit up for more than three seconds without it being screen capped by someone. And he also tweeted out a thing about his return, essentially implying, while you guys are playing checkers, I'm playing chess. <laughs> I love he's got some kind of 40 though. chess move coming out of here, and that's how he's going to get his comeback. I love the memes that have been the response, though. My favorite is just the reverse side of that board being a child. Yes, yeah, so, although like the thing it was like, well, while we're playing checkers, he's playing children. <laughs> <laughs> uh, like honestly, it's a dumb move. He should have just disappeared. Uh, and the fact he's trying to downplay it because I've seen like a couple of things pop up. One's like him standing in an alleyway or something trying to do the dramatic um like 80s you know hero cop pose like Um, no mate you you don't get to make a triumphant return i'm almost waiting for the the 2010s apology video like the the in tears i'm so sorry i made a mistake actually that's the weird thing you don't see that many like of those apology videos anymore they, they're well, all because everyone um, knows they don't work yeah and yeah. they're mean to death like that's just a dumb oh, thing yeah. <laughs> now you get I people mean, playing songs <laughs> i was about to say we all remember that last with the ukulele yeah <laughs> oh god fuck just it's terrifying i look if he just like owned it and been like look i made the tweet it's a thing I'll try and come back. It'd have been like, okay, sure, man, yeah. like go for it. Or even, but just when you're it. like, I'm gonna hide it and downplay the whole thing, like I'm playing some kind of fucking Vulcan 40 chess shit. Yeah, no, no, no. Yeah. You're not taking the the thing you did seriously anymore. Yeah, or Honestly, even just own it. Say like, if uh, this happened, um, I've learned from it, and I'm I'm going to do better from here, and then actually fucking do better. Don't be the same oh, cunt yeah. you've always been. No, well, but he's he wouldn't be Doctor Disrespect if he didn't keep being the same cut he's always yeah. been. Yeah, honestly, I think the character should be. <laughs> yeah, the, the character itself should be put aside. If you want to come back, fine. Make a new character in some case because Doctor Disrespect is dead. There's no way you're res- like, resuscitating that thing. Look, man, the kind of audience he courts might let him get away with it. Yeah, unfortunately. That so you can get. I don't watch his stuff. Every, everyone but... subscribed to his stream is now on an FBI watch list. <laughs> Yes, definitely. So, you know, he's going to give it a go. If he wants to, go for it. I don't really care either way, because, like, I don't give much of a crap about him. If this wasn't to do with an underage person, I wouldn't care at all. Oh, pretty much. Like, I don't think... (laughs) The only time I've ever watched any of his, like, footage or from his streams is when this happened. Like, Mm. I had no interest in watching it, so I... I saw a couple of things when he was, like, getting started, but it was Mm. like, oh... Oh, I automatically was like, no, 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 this isn't me. This isn't yeah. my thing. Don't like. So, something that we do like, the Australian <laughs> government's looking to try and add uh, a little more cash into people's pockets who have hex debt. I like money. <laughs> Except you don't have a hex debt. <laughs> yeah, no, that's fair. But I do have bills. So I'm happy I got money for that, at least. So, they're injecting another $3 billion into, he- into a hex debt plan, which could put into people with a hex debt per year an extra $1,200. Which would be nice. Nice. But like, yeah. you see a little while ago they released like the Australia's largest hex debts and one of them's like over $700,000. Yeah. Which is kind of crazy because you're only supposed to do like one course with a hex debt. So what the yeah. fuck did that guy do? Uh, he ignored interest Fucking for oath. a very long time, I guess. Uh, cause but the, this the amount is also... Hex debts are criminal. 
Oh yeah, this this amount, the relief, is also capped. If you're over a certain amount, there is a maximum amount you can claim once. Yeah. And it's like oh. $4,000. Like that won't even right. cover the interest for a loan yeah, that no. size. Mm. But, At yeah. least Hex in Australia is better than fucking student debt in the States. Oh, they go through actual banks and they're predatory. Like, holy But it's not shit. just that. But like, there's no restrictions on. Like, at least in Australia, you don't pay your hex debt until you make a certain amount of money. Yeah, you stay under that threshold. You, no one's ever coming for your hex debt. Pretty much. In the states, you could be uh, working like nine fucking takeout jobs, and all of it goes to your student debt. Oh yeah, they it's take crazy as much as they can. It's fucked. Like, yeah, it's but, not great. But thankfully, more money. Yeah. Yeah. Happy that more students in Australia can go and pursue higher education. And uh, maybe not have quite as much burden on their shoulders. Yeah. Although, I do say that as we're, we're three guys who all went to a higher education university and do not work in the industry we got it for. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Good times. Good times. But also, I would really like higher education to be cheaper. I yeah. Would, I would like it to stop being privatized as much as it is and just, you know, go back Honestly, to what it was. I almost wish that university could be something that was more um relevant like electable yeah well look it's never going to be overly relevant unless the the thing you're doing is like the area you want to go into needs that very specific hmm. qualifications yeah. like uh, a friend of mine uh he's like a high level mathematician yeah and of course all his uni courses mean something hmm. once we did you ultimately as we found out you didn't need any of them um yeah you could have gotten by with a TAFE course on basic 3D and then working your way up. I uh, yeah. make sure that you could have taught yourself with a YouTube tutorial. <laughs> yeah. Probably. From some dude in Manila. Yeah. And he'd, he'd explain it so well as well. I know he would. That guy is <laughs> oh. amazing. If you're looking for a YouTube tutorial and some Indian guy says, it's like, bam, this is it. Yeah, I found the answer to my problems. If it's a white kid going, hey guys, I end the fucking video. <laughs> yeah. But, yeah. But, yeah. Have, uh, sorry, the point I was trying to make, like, the thing I actually, like, ended up taking away the most from uni was interpersonal skills, mm. uh, hitting deadlines, yeah, some writing stuff, and the yeah. friends I made there. The friends which we made I think along is the an, way. <laughs> I know, yeah. and I know it sounds really corny, but coming out of high school where you no longer have the structure to put people around you, mm. having to kind of learn to have adults as friends... Not just people you were kind of forced to be with what in your teen years. Yeah. I think that was very valuable. Yeah. But you cost thirty thousand dollars to do. Yeah. So it's <laughs> not something everyone can do. No. I, I would love it if higher education got to a point where you could do a course in something you were interested in for very little or maybe free yeah. and get that other half of the human experience. Because it's, it's pretty incredibly good. valuable. Oh, definitely. The only downside is of all the people you could have been friends with got stuck with us. I know what. <laughs> Easy consolation prize. Now deal with it. <laughs> you but, can't get rid of like, us. We're the friend the, version of herpes. The biggest thing that needs to be pushed now isn't university. Like, it needs to be fucking trades. Like, go back oh, yeah, to... Yeah. Oh, yeah. Like, you that you can do so a much. trade and you can earn great fucking money doing a trade. Mm. Yeah. So much, oh, go oh, to no. university and get a big paying job. There's no one looking for those jobs. You need to have had 10 years experience before you've come out of fucking uni. Go do a trade. We're going to see a swing Maybe. back towards trades because all of the, the white collar stuff is slowly being incorporated into more and more AI tech. So... Manual labor like, jobs? You can 3D print a house? Nah. <laughs> nah. I mean, you can, but it's not yeah. really a great house. Actually, they're apparently quite good. Yeah, they're not bad. They're, they're just always round. Yeah, yeah, they are. But, I mean, they're not the worst. They're and I would agree. the houses from Dragon Ball. I, I, I can't yeah. remember. <laughs> and I, I'm not saying I'd be opposed to that either. Right? I wouldn't mind a capsule house. <laughs> I'd love a capsule house. I would paint it as a capsule house. Um, no, I, I, I had something that was going to... It's gone fucking now. I derailed you with Dragon Ball references. My yes, you did. Most expertly. Yeah. <laughs> I'm very good at it. Although, something that, you know, should have probably been derailed sooner. <coughs> Even uh, Tim Sweeney, CEO of Epic, has gone, uh, yeah, man, those exclusives did not pay off like we thought they were gonna. 
It only took them, what, ten years to figure it out? Uh, six? I don't know. I remember Either way, Epic it took Jail them a lot longer than years. anyone else. Like, everyone was saying, like, no way is this a good fucking deal, really. Yeah. Well, like, apparently they still say that the that they the free games were uh, were good. Like, putting that out there and getting people over to try Epic hmm. was a win. Yeah. Unfortunately, the exclusives that they spent so much money on. Yeah. Uh, yeah, six years. They've been going for six years. Okay. The thing that we kept screaming at them to stop doing, and they kept doing, oh, wait, no, that's a bad thing? Oh, fuck. And we've constantly had examples of big games going exclusive on Epic and then not selling well. I think yeah. the biggest one was Alan Wake 2 not mm. being the most sold thing in its month. Yeah. Despite being the single most anticipated game for that month. If they if they did like the, the epic jail for fucking six months, whatever it is, and then at the end of that six months, that was the free game, I'd probably make yeah. me look at epic a little bit more. But it would, I go there Or at every least month, a substantial discount. I go there every month and get the free games and add them to the library, fully knowing I will never play these games. Yeah, they're just taking money out of their pocket. Just just because I can. It's a library yeah. and I'm I just like to collect the shiny thing. Honestly, yeah. we are just dragons for video games. We <laughs> oh, one hundred percent. That and for me, 3D print files. I have so many. I'm just hoarding them now. Uh, dude, I'm trying to like decide whether or not I'm gonna back a Kickstarter for like an absurd pack of fucking um Legacy of Kane stuff. I like the fact you came to me asking if you should. My immediate response was, yes, wait, what's the Kickstarter? <laughs> <laughs> you had me at should I? <laughs> at, look, if I did, it would be the most money I've ever spent on a Kickstarter. That is um, fair. Which is I'm... why it's like, I don't know if I should do this, because Kickstarters are notoriously shaky on quality. Yeah. Yeah. But still. Shiny yeah. things. Hopefully this means that maybe Epic will shift away from the Epic Jail model, because even they're starting to realise it's not working. Honestly, well, I'm expecting them to double down. I, I I don't know why, but my brain goes, yeah, they're going to double down on this. Well, like from hopefully Epic stepping away from games being in fucking Epic Jail to Square Enix, Square Enix deciding Final Fantasy shouldn't be in fucking PlayStation Jail. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So we recently got the announcement of the release date for Final Fantasy 16 coming to PC at last. It's in September, by the way. Nice. So we'll be seeing that on that. That month's might play. But they've also stated, yeah, yeah, we're probably going to do day ones for PC from here on out. <laughs> you yeah, can always fair. see the Sony exec going, okay. <laughs> 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 I wonder if they like even bothered some... telling them. Maybe they found out from, like, Twitter or something. That, oh, they're doing what? Oh, no! <laughs> it feels like the kind of thing where Sony was like, no, nah, trust us, 16 will sell more than enough copies on our co console. Hmm. Then they had the month where it came out and it was a sales dip for, yeah. uh, for Square. And they're like, Sony? <laughs> Explain yourself. Trust me, I'm a rat. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, regional jokes. <laughs> oh... <laughs> Amazing, but I look. I a PC player. I that's where I do all my gaming. Yeah. I don't own a yeah. console. Oh, I own a Switch because it's the only one I like. But yeah, a game on PC. I'm always happy when a developer finally realizes we're not the competitor to the other thing. We're a sales vector. Yeah, yeah. come on. The weird thing is, it just takes them so long. It's like, wait, there's an entire market we've been adamantly ignoring and demonizing. Why? Because they're over there on behind the fence. Like, there's a gate. Go through the. <laughs> Open yeah. the gates. Cut the fucking fence. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's arguably worked for Xbox. They yeah. decided to make a big yeah. push for PC, and they're one of the biggest names in that space now. Makes yeah, sense. come right. on, PlayStation and uh, people who thought PlayStation was your main vector, mm. come play with us. Like, this we like to learning, buy. Like, there is slowly more and more like top end PlayStation games coming, but just I'm waiting for him just to go. Ah, oh, fine. Here's a day one. Yeah, yeah. I'm waiting um, for that day. I reckon we'll get it at least the next couple of years. Yeah, okay. definitely, definitely. I think the thing they've really realized is that gamers tend to be somewhat enthusiasts for for computers. Yeah, yeah. 
which means we probably have disposable income. <laughs> Pretty much. We're, we're Given good. that a graphics card will run you a thousand bucks these days, if you've got a gaming machine, you have disposable money. Most definitely. So, yeah, I think they've kind of just figured out where the market is, and, oh, oh yeah, yeah, they've got pockets in there, rather deep. <laughs> yeah, they've got pockets, we should go over there, and just so he's like, oh, guys, come back, please. <laughs> we, but we look still, at that walled garden! We put in a fountain! <laughs> <laughs> It doesn't have water yet, but it's a fountain. you got to pay extra for the water. But the PC guys have got the jumpy castle and the entire pizza oven. I'm going over there. We've got a fountain. Like, yeah, you got a water fountain. They have a soda fountain. We're going there. And if they don't, I'll damn well mod it in. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> yes. Uh, so, well, I mean, let's just keep the fucking gaming news going. Uh, news. One of the uh, higher ups at Roll Seven, who was a studio owned by Take Two until they shut him down, has gone. Yeah, pilot, pirate, roller dome. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Because in their opinion, Take Two didn't do anything to make that game, mm. but Take Two is going to take all of the money going forward. Oh yeah. So uh, yeah, it's going to no one who helped make that game. <laughs> So, so feel free to pirate that shit. But so if fuck them. If you're going to follow that logic, you could do the same thing for most of EA's catalog. You could, but catalog. they don't have developers saying it. <laughs> yeah. Their developers well, are scared of the NDAs they sign. They might fight them. <laughs> Look, if you want to pirate stuff, you're going to backward in whatever excuse you want into doing it. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. But it's just kind of funny seeing a dev be like, yeah, like none of us are getting paid for this anymore. This is not our product. So do what you <laughs> fucking want. I don't care. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, that's a really fucking shitty thing, but it is the way it is, I suppose. It's a horrible thing to have to hear, but I'm, I would be okay with a big company getting screwed over in that fashion. So yeah. and particularly take two. Oh yeah. Fuck. Oh shit! Sorry, something I recently found out. Uh, you know how there was that uh, they're doing a movie for um, uh, Kingmaker, that one about the dude going back in time with yeah. the mutant shooting oh, up yeah, yeah, yeah. medieval territory, and it's still a trailer. Yeah, yeah. We recently got an announcement that they're making a Madden movie. What? Re Isn't that just football? Yeah. You know what's funnier? <laughs> yeah. They've got a casting for who they're going to have play John Madden. Okay. Do you know who it is? John Madden? <laughs> no. An AI John Madden? <laughs> no. Uh, it's Nick Cage. For fuck's really? sake! <laughs> Nick Cage is cast to play John Madden in the Madden movie. Who keeps letting him out of his fucking cave? I swear to God. We lock him in there every week, and some producer lets him back out. I don't really have a problem with that. I mean, yeah, the, the incredible weight of massive talent was an incredibly good movie. Yeah, I loved it. Good movie, actually. At, at some point, there has to be a reference to that movie. Where someone is here at EA and someone is at sports. Then in third book, it's in the game. There has to be a <laughs> reference somewhere there. No, no, no. It's in the movie. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. That'll be it. Oh God. Oh, uh, sorry. I ju like just sort of randomly twigged on that. It was just like, God damn, that's so funny. No, that's fair. That's. That's fucking... Actually, on that same vein of weird choices, um, was it the, the Hitman series coming out? No, no, I was about to pivot to this, because I was about to do, like, let's do the three articles about gaming that are going to make us grumpy. Ah, so <laughs> And this one's only going to make me grumpy, because I'm the only person who plays the game franchise. No, it's the Yakuza franchise. Ah, oh, that's right, yeah, Yakuza. They have a TV show coming out pretty soon on Netflix, and the guys who made it have come out and said they're not fans of the game! Then why, why did you no, accept so... the offer? Mm. Did I, you I... learn nothing from her? <sighs> really? Yeah, they learned like... how to hate the, the audience they're catering to. Are we going to get through this entire Yakuza show and there's going to be no one having a shirtless bo f fist fight? Apparently. No, the very first Just... episode, he'll put on a helmet and you'll never see his face again. <laughs> 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 Yes. The, the, he'll roll up and, and fucking kill you. Won't be in his signature white suit. It'll be, it'll be like, like what the fuck, bright orange or something, just to fuck with us. But no, it'll just uh, be some white guy saying, "I think there's Yakuza over there." Now follow me at my yeah. adventures. <laughs> <laughs> it'll be Nick. I don't know, man. <laughs> All I know uh, is I heard that and I'm like, 
damn it, why, why does this keep happening? Why do people who don't like things get to touch them? Yeah, like, it should not be allowed. Just, if you're not a fan of something, don't put your hand up to make that property's, like, big thing. Like, yeah. Especially with the amount of shit that uh, games going to any other media has. Like, mm. very few games have tr made that transportation over to movies or TV shows. A few have. They've been, they've been getting better lately, but Definitely they're still have. rough. But even um, then, it's very limited cases where you've actually yeah. got mm. someone who's passionate about the IP fighting mm. for it to be as the IP should be. Yeah. Mm. And, like, unless you have someone like Henry Cavill in your team who loved the franchise they were working on and went and fought tooth and claw against the fucking writers to make sure that the actual... You know, he, you know he's actually got a, a thing written into his clause for that uh, Warhammer series that if yeah. he doesn't uh, okay a script by somewhere in December, it gets killed? Yeah, he has veto power, which I fucking love, and I want him to have more of that, because he actually cares about the properties he goes in for. Um, and we need more of that, but we need it from the writing staff, not just mm. these people who are being paid to make schlock, to force feed the you know the public it's yeah. not but even like, schlock it. like it's shit made for not this audience that is already a fan yeah. of the product we're gonna court a different audience with this property mm. why they don't know it they don't care about it and all they're gonna hear from anyone who does care about it is how shit it is yeah and the weird thing is take the halo one for example if people who did enjoy that uh, series. I don't know if they exist, but there might be someone out there who's... There's gotta know, be someone. Someone's run into enough walls. Uh, but if they pick up the Halo games, they're probably going to hate them, because it's not the same. It's very, no. very different. Yeah. At which point it's like, alright, so you've drawn them into this market, into a thing that they don't understand, you have set the false pretense of it, and now they're angry at you. Yeah. No one wins here. No. Or, they do come in and you're right, you do get to convert some people, but then they realize how fucking garbage a job you did. Yeah. Because I could see some people of watching Halo and be like, yeah, it's not bad, I'll have a look, and like maybe look up the books or something. Mm. You know, hey man, like they did the Fall of Reach in the TV show, how did they do it in the game? Here's the book, have fun. Yeah. Yeah. And then being like, you butchered it, you fucking animal. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> what is this? Look, what have you done to my boy? <laughs> <laughs> Um, oh. So, you know, even if you get them in, you're probably pissing them off anyway. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. So if you do another thing, they're just going to be like, no, I saw what you did. Yeah, you only get them in long enough to piss them off even more. Yeah. But it's like Netflix has a, a history of just shitty adaptions. Mm. Like Shitty adaptions the... was usually like one good thing about it. Yeah. Like, remember the Attack on Titan adaption they did? No, I haven't watched anything to do with Attack on Titan except the first, like... It's I don't know, six bad. episodes that got nowhere slow and yeah. then read the fucking manga. I eventually forced myself to, like, finish... Or try and catch up. It's still fucking going. We're meant to be in the last season, like, three seasons ago. Um, but yeah, no, they ruined that one. It was horrible. The Full Metal Alchemist one they did was just... Oh, yeah, it was pretty trash. ...fucking god-awful. I don't know why they Only enough, doing this. the only one I think they've had any success with was, was the Death Note one. Yeah. And that was, one, they decided to do it so different it kind of worked. Mm. And two, um, uh, the dude who played Green Goblin. I know the one you're talking about, William but Defoe. my brain will... William Dafoe! William Dafoe. Yes. They had William Dafoe playing Ryuk, and he absolutely fucking nailed it. He did, yeah. Like, if, if, you, if you just look it up, and just look up all the clips of him playing Ryuk in that movie, you'll love it. Mm. Everything else about the movie, garbage, hot trash. Oh, but yeah. like um, like maximum American cheeseburger hot trash. Yeah, I mean, but at the same time, even a broken clock can be right once a day, kind of. Thing. Yeah, um, twice. So I got one or two things. But yeah, so I'm less excited for this. I was actually quite excited to watch a Yakuza TV show because I absolutely adore the games. Mm. I own all of the mainline series so far. Nice. And I'm pretty keen to play the three spinoffs. <laughs> Fair. So, RGG's got me hooked pretty bad for the Yakuza franchise, so... I, I was pretty excited. Now I'm not so much. Yeah. Now it's a matter of, you might hate watch it, but even then, you ain't gonna pay for it. Look, I'm gonna watch it... Definitely on someone else's Netflix account. I'm not paying for it. <laughs> but, you know, I'll, I'll check it out. Yeah. 
definitely so, not going thing. to go to the high seas. Yes. We don't no. do that here. Not at all. No. 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 Not without developer permission. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Look, man, it kind of back worked for fucking um, uh, CD Projekt Red back with The Witcher Three. That is true. They encouraged people to 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 pirate it and try it out, and they even put out a patch for it for free on torrent sites. And guess what? They made a massive return on it. Yeah. Because more people gave it a go because they were like, "Here, pirate our thing," and <laughs> then shit, they tried awesome. it. We're Let's like, "Give them the money for yeah, it." Yeah, you you earned your hundred bucks. Yeah. yeah. So it might end up being the next thing that guy works on. People were like, "We got you." <laughs> Hopefully. Unlike Ubisoft, that just fired forty-five more people. Again. Yep, from two studios. They could have just done the whole stuff from fucking Star Wars Outlaws. <laughs> oh no, no that would be an no, they improvement could. they can't make improvements <laughs> and it was from two of the studios working on side titles so yeah who fucking knows so how but, many was yeah, it 45 uh, 45. 45 45 45 more people lost their jobs from Ubisoft across two studios God damn. Uh, and not one uh, of them would have been above like lower management probably yeah. not no. guaranteed and I our last uh, gaming article that I had set up here is the uh, and I actually didn't know about this and now I'm like yeah you they, they should be pissed apparently actors have been getting blindsided with sexual content in games that they're doing VO or mocap for yeah, yeah that that's a you can't surprise a person with that like in every oh not every but in movie contracts I imagine you have to disclose if there's going to be a sex scene well they, I mean, they should get the sexual scene at all beforehand like when they yeah. sign on to it, they should get the entire script. Mm. Yeah. Like, so I think at the, least have an idea the, what's coming. A lot mm. of games start, like, scouting voice acting while they're finishing up things like scripts, unlike movies, which are usually, like, the whole script is done. Yeah. yeah. Now we go find voice talent. But at least in the ad, like, for the, like, when they... they oh, yeah. No, they absolutely should. coming up for the voice actors. So at the start, they should be saying, okay, here's the game this is the story we're doing there may be sex scenes there most likely will be sex scenes mm. are you comfortable in doing yeah. that that's all it takes yeah. yeah to not be a skeezy cunt pretty much yeah and but, then you could be like oh what What do I have to do for it oh you, you've got to run a couple times into a mic who's directing really this Dr. Disrespect of shit <laughs> <laughs> but it's just no, I said actors not child actors ah fuck well. uh, it's um, one of those annoying things like, I, but like yeah the fact that they're just getting told Randomly yeah. today we're shooting that sex scene. Yeah. What? As today, one fucking today sex you're grunting. Scene. Yeah. Well, probably it's like they also use a lot of the voice actors for mocap in some cases. It was yeah. Like, Congrats! You have to put on this weird body condom and slide on other people. Good luck. Yeah. It's like, ah, so okay. Yeah. I I didn't know about this. I mean, I'm not surprised. Fucking industries are shit. Yeah. Um. So I'm not surprised to hear it, no. but it is the first time but, I've ever seen it. it. And it is a I'm pretty kind of annoyed. Like, big step. Like I, I honestly would have expected that when they got hired on, they'd say, "Yeah, in this script, so, there there will be a, a sex scene, and are you comfortable yeah. doing that?" You'd think that would be right there in the front. Yeah, that, yeah, that should be like at least the courteous thing to do. But no, apparently these guys don't give two shits. But again, they've always really treated voice actors and that kind of stuff with a weird kind of not quite disdain, but less than a normal actor. Yeah. Well, this is annoying thing where people think because you're just a voice, you're not worth it. Yeah. Like, an actor has to be able to personify in a room this character and can define it. Yeah, but these guys do it all with just their voice. I know, it's incredibly... Uh, bleh. Words! Uh, you are there's my stumble good. over words for the episode. <laughs> Gotta have one. It is incredibly impressive watching these people do their thing, particularly when they do that thing where they show off all the characters they've done. Yeah. And Fuck. they can still nail all of them. There's one of um, the guy who was like Fry and Zoidberg from Futurama explaining how he got to Zoidberg. And he's like, oh, I took this character. And he'd slip into like that portion of it and layer bits on top until it's Zoidberg. It's like, that's fucking amazing. Yeah. yeah. I've seen another one where a, a dude was like, some of these are actually the same. They're just deeper or higher. Yeah. And then he showed two of them off next to each other. And one was a high-pitched voice. And he said, he said the exact same sentence, 
but in a lower register, and it was like, that's the fucking character. What the hell yeah. did you do, you sorcerer? <laughs> He's clearly some kind of dark magician. But the, um, Did you go to the crossroads at midnight? <laughs> oh, always. But they never show up. But uh, if you ever get bored and want to see like a lot of stuff about the voice uh, acting world, check out the uh, documentary I Know That Voice. It's really mm. well done. Yeah. It's actually produced by Joe DiMaggio, I think, who's one of the big voice actors. Uh, he played Bender and a bunch of others. Mm. Like Very iconic voice. So, I learnt a lot from that movie. Mm. Although, like, if you want to, like, do yourself a quick favor and just have a funny laugh at what voice actors can do, go look up, I don't know what the the actual show is, hmm. but if you look up uh, Star Wars, uh, Pinky and... Oh, Pinky and the Brain. Chris, yeah. It's, it's hilarious. Yeah. It's the voice actor for Pinky doing all of his lines, all the snarf stuff as well. Yeah. While as Obi Wan and Chris Griffin from Family Guys, who Seth, Mac uh, Seth, no, Green. Seth, Green. uh, Seth Green's character, yeah. um, doing all of Anakin's lines, it's fucking. Hilarious. It's a, a thing they do at um, majority of comic cons that like they have a panel of them. They start doing readings apparently. Um, yeah, so you get things like Wacko, a... Yakko, and the chick who played Dot doing random scenes from like Fifty Shades of Grey. It's like this is fucking weird, guys. <laughs> the the one I told you about from a show that actually the dude who did Pinky in that bit mm. he he runs it and he's got a whole bunch of them. Oh, nice. Um, so if you like, I said if you Star Wars Pinky and Chris, mm. you'll you'll get it. It's it's so fucking funny. I have to look into that one. But like. It's just like a couple of voice actors reading lines and doing what they do, and it's so cool. And the fact that these sort of people could get roped into this crap. Yeah. Like, it's, no, that's not okay. It's not cool, guys. For fuck's sake. Right, so, here's the big thing we had for today. Uh, Gamescom is going on right now. We've had their opening night, which means we've got the opening night trailer roll. Yay! Yay. Look so, at all the we're going to look at trailers. Well, I mean, some of these are good. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. Mm. Uh, so, uh, I will put the playlist in the show notes as always if you'd like to follow along. You guys ready? Yeah. As well as uh, The first one is just a teaser. The second video is the first one. <laughs> All right, so... Which is for Borderlands 4. I mean... I don't know. The, la like the third one wasn't amazing yeah that's kind of my biggest gripe right now and i played um like i got in a humble tiny tina's fucking wonderland thing hmm. um it was not that good it was trying to extend out on a bit that was only supposed to last for like an hour and be a catharsis ending to roland and tried yeah. to make the whole game out of it i don't think it worked it it really didn't i mean but I don't think anyone was in like like not expecting Gearbox to make a fourth. Oh lines. yeah, absolutely, oh, yeah. it was coming. Yeah, it's their cash cow. It's literally the only thing they got. They had to go crawling back to take two for fuck's sake. Yeah, I mean it's a reveal trailer, so we don't see any actual gameplay, but it looks pretty. But you know, I can't yeah. make any decisions off it just yet. So does every trailer. Yeah. Is that Borderlands Four text the same as fucking Duke Nukem? It really looks, it looks like, like it. Looks like it now you mentioned. And you know it. what's super annoying? Randy Pitchford owns Duke Nukem, so if it is, he's okay to use the font. Yeah. Fair. And I hate that. I like Duke Nukem. <laughs> yeah. Uh, next up is a collab between Fate Stay Night and Honkai Star Rail. I mean, if you're into it, you're into it. Neither of things I've seen or played, so that's fine. The problem I've always had with Fate Stay Night, I know that, like, like that, like, lists on how to watch it exists but anytime I go to try and watch Fate Stay Night it's like which one yeah <laughs> and they're all slightly different and everyone has a different opinion about which one's the good one <laughs> but you know if you're into that you're into that have fun that's fair next up is Dying Light The Beast which is a standalone expansion a an expand alone and if you've got the ultimate edition of Dying Light 2 it comes free with it Oh, Scott. Oh, awesome. I don't think I have that, but I do own Dying no, Light but, 2. Like, for as bad as Dying Light 2 was, like, it's good. 
I will admit, this trailer does make it look like it's going to be a bit of a tighter game, and, mm. like, that was probably my biggest problem with Dying Light 2. It really kind of felt a little too loose. It needed a little focus. Yeah. I agree with that wholeheartedly. So, you know, I'm not opposed to another... I mean, I like Dying Light. I'm not going to pretend I don't. Hmm. So, something doing more in that setting, you know, I'll play it. I yeah. mean, I played fucking Dead Island too, so... Yeah, I mean, <laughs> I'll give it a shot, but... Next up, they're doing a new Mafia game, which is Mafia the Old Country. Sounds fun. I know, it could be interesting. A sort of, uh, Mafia Red Dead Redemption. That... That does sound really that fun. That could be very, fun. very awesome. Yeah. I know, right? Given the fact that they've tried something different with every Mafia game, maybe this works. Yeah. Because the first one was too simulator, the second one wasn't simulator enough for the people who were fans of the first one, the third one was a complete arcade affair, so, mm. like, what are we going to get here? Who knows? Uh, Top Town RTS. I mean, we get to play a What? Top Town RTS. <laughs> I doubt yes. it. I doubt that. Um, and it's set in Sicily, which is a setting I don't know. Yeah. So, I, I think it's Sicily. You know, where the mob's from, isn't it? I think it's Sicily. Yeah. Uh, the old country. Yes. So, you know, it's it, that setting's not one I'm particularly familiar with. So, it's like one of the reasons I've been playing Black Myth with Kong, and I've been loving it because it's got all this Chinese mythology in it. Mm. I'm like, I don't know that! That's yeah. interesting! It's stuff I don't so, know everything about, therefore, fun. You know, a sort of, like, history, like, back in the day, mafia in Sicily could be, like, really interesting. Yeah. Uh, next up is the trailer for Call of Duty Black Ops 6, which is coming day one to Game Pass. Oh, fair. Oh, okay, Maybe so I'll now, actually play it. Now Xbox starts their fucking march. <laughs> yes. <laughs> we knew it was going to happen. We absolutely knew it was going to happen. Oh, definitely. Uh, so yeah, you're going to be able to play that one on Game Pass straight out the gate if you want to play the five or six odd hour campaign. That's about it all I enjoy playing out of these anymore. Same. Pretty I mean, much. it looks pretty entertaining. Like the, the Black Ops pretty. games, like they're usually a little. They're not just a straightforward. I'm gonna shoot everything in the room. Like they normally have a yeah. little bit more story, a little more depth through them, which are always fun. Yes. Well, this one looks like you're investigating actual, like proper investigation. It, Your it camera looks a little is more a, spy like, thriller. One yeah. yeah. I'm into that. This could be good. I kind of want something that's got a bit kind of a pulp sci-fi not pulp sci-fi pulp adventure vibe yeah, yeah. that'd be you know, good. going around taking the photos glue trying to tame the world <laughs> but no it looks uh pretty decent I don't know how much of this is in game but I mean I actually wouldn't put it past it to be in game footage because uh, yeah. as much as we shit on game on the Call of Duty games they're they are gorgeous. pretty. Oh yeah, yeah, they're fucking. Okay. They are the closest I would say I've ever played to a game that actually feels like the cutscenes. Yeah. If if only Next they weren't like a fucking four hundred gig install. Oh, oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, oh. Fucking Warzone. Yeah. If your game is bigger than all of Red Dead Redemption Two, then you need to be as big as Red Dead, Red Dead Redemption Two. Yeah. yeah. Sorry, fuck off. You don't have enough <laughs> game for me. It's too much. Uh, next up is Rinimal, which is the next thing from the guys who did Little Nightmares 1 and 2. And this actually looks pretty fucking cool, I'm not gonna lie. I mean, it's their signature style. Small creature in a lavish area with, like, weird shit going on. Yeah. Weird eldritch horrors and strange shit. And I mean, like, Eldritch Horrors is, like, the easiest sell on me ever. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, Cosmic Horror is, like, my favorite genre. It is pretty Did fun. Did you say Darkness and Tentacles? I'm in. <laughs> <laughs> Son of a bitch, I'm in. Next up is the trailer for Marvel Rivals. Which is probably going to get Stay in the Sun and then quietly shuffle off. Is this like uh, the the squad based shooter, or is this another? Yeah. This is game? the hero shoot. This ah. is the hero shooter, the one that where, where they had the NDA. If you were in the beta, that you couldn't talk shit about it. Mm. <laughs> it's uh, an yeah. Overwatch wannabe. This could have just yeah. been an Overwatch skin. 
It could have. It really could have, actually. It's kind of the thing that they got the most shit for. It was like, yeah, you just kind of seem like you've made Marvel Overwatch. Yeah, this literally could have been a season skin pack. Look, <laughs> it'll get its time in the sun, and it'll either shine and finally be the one that kills off Overwatch, or it'll go the way every other one of these things has gone. Overwatch, I'm hoping the one that first off one. Overwatch. <laughs> yeah, you're not wrong. First one, then the other, maybe. You know, it kills off Overwatch, then shuffles to a slow, a horrible death. I mean, Concord's not done very yeah. well at all, so... I can't um, imagine There is why. a lot of positive... There is a lot of positive buzz. How much you want to trust that, I'm not going to choose for you. But apparently, like, there is a lot of excitement for this thing coming out. Nice. Next up is Indiana Jones and the Great Circle, and we finally got gameplay! Yay! It looks pretty good. Like... It, it really looks like someone went, how about a point and click, but we do it in first person. Yeah. And then we let them whip a guy. Yeah, you, you, one of the clicks is whip. Which I'm going to freely abuse if I get this game. <laughs> and I mean, like, a thing I didn't know until I watched this um, is that they used a lot of mocap, so that's kind of yeah. like why everyone's got a good, real, like, like, human movement to it. It... In some cases, yes, but there is a point in this um, trailer that kind of like irks me a bit because it's when he's picking up the um, the statue and it cuts to mm. the the game version of Indy, and he's mm. holding it too low and it's moving around too freely. So that has no weight to it, yeah. guys. <laughs> yeah, you're gonna do a bit of light, you know, fisty cuffs, solve some puzzles, collect some artifacts. I love it's... puzzles, and we all know it's got at least a good sense of humor from that like ten minute cut scene they put out at E3. Yeah. But, like, that Russian was like, yes, this dude is hilarious. <laughs> that was pretty So, cool. I might actually pick... <coughs> oh, Jesus, maybe I shouldn't. <coughs> I was about to say, now the I will pick this up and my body re <laughs> like, rejected that one. <laughs> God just tried to smite you for your opinion, I think. Alright, I'm gonna move on to the next trailer, which is Warhammer 40,000 Space Marine. This is a new okay. trailer at last. But, like, it's coming out next month, so... It looks so pretty! It, know, it's I'm funny that Karen said, somewhere. like, we had to do, like, three-player squad base, because four was just way too overpowered. That's just... I mean, yeah, fuck! <laughs> oh, and in this trailer, uh, Australian content creator Skill Up gets a shout-out, so, you know, that's oh, nice. dope. That's good. Love, love it when our Australian boys get some recognition. Yeah. And not for bad shit, like being really bad at breakdancing. <laughs> Let's not relitigate that. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Next up is more so gameplay pretty. for uh, Dragon Ball Z Sparking Zero, which we already know about, but like, yeah. fuck it, I've always want to see more of this. I'm actually kind of keen for this. I loved Budokai and all those like older versions, and this looks really pretty. Like, the thing I've always liked about the Budokai games, though, is, like, they're real beer and peanuts games. Yeah. Like, you can be a six-pack deep and still have fun with Budokai and do crazy laser beam shit. Oh, fuck it's yeah. It's not Correct. like a fighter game where it's like, oh, I actually need coordination. <laughs> yeah. But no, I, I'm kind of keen for this. I, I think I might pick this one up. Yeah. Same. Same, same, same. Next up is the gameplay trailer for Dune Awakening, which is that MMO light thing they wanted to do with Dune. Mm. I, I I don't like the MMO faction of it, but the th like the uh, copters they showed in this look fucking fancy. I like oh those. yeah, the the dragonflies. Yeah, they look so good. The gameplay feels very looter shooter. But yeah, I'm it's at it. just kind of showing off finally what Awakening is going to be, and it seems to be a third person loot based. MMO light. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. I completely agree. I'm already angry at it. I keep seeing the guy, the main character walking normally on sand. Stop that. Look, it's never been... Even in the movies, they only ever do the sand walking green very limited amounts. I know, but still. I think the problem I have, and I agree with uh, Skill Up on this one... If you'd called this game literally anything else, it would probably actually pique my interest more. Yeah. Because it's not very June. It really isn't. It's got... It's like it stole the aesthetic and did nothing. 
And essentially, it's like <laughs> for some reason there's base building and other stuff. Yeah. Like, I normally love base building, but this just seems weird. Crap! I just realized what this thing's been bugging me, like what it reminds me of. Right. It's KOTOR 2. Ah! Have you gotten to the equipment sh screen where it shows you, like, you're putting the armor on? Yeah. <laughs> it's Fuck. KOTOR! Yeah, no. It really is KOTOR. I'm I mean, kind like, of annoyed I'm... that I don't get to play with one of the dragonflies, because those flying those looks like fun, but I'm probably never oh, going to yeah. pick this game up, so... <laughs> oh, well. Well, if that's your thing, like, it's there. Cool trailer. Yeah. Uh, next up is the trailer for Civilization 7, which is one of those games I think it's always weird when they make a trailer for, because it's like, the crowd who buys Civilization will keep buying Civilization. Yeah, I'm probably going to pick this up. I've had far too so much fun with these yeah. games. Like, hell, we spent, what was it, like two this months This is one of those games game that when we went, first went to Union uh, said days. you need to oh, okay, uninstall yeah. it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, it was actually, I remember that. Yeah. yeah. We were told you when we first have started, if you've got okay. WoW or Civ installed, uninstall them or you will fail the, the, the semester. And they were true to their words. If you yeah, you know, didn't do that, so no. Uh, the Civilization games are just so very Moorish. So it's just one yes. more turn. One more turn. It can't be that long. Just one more turn. Uh, and that's where they get you. It is. Then you're like six in the morning, having not slept for the last three days. Chap Lisp is going another round. <laughs> just, just Chap Lisp, like God damn it, Gandhi, how could you? <laughs> Always, everyone knows he's gonna do it, and then everyone lets him. Yeah, everyone lets him reach the nuclear age. Like, no, you kill Gandhi first. It's horrible, but you have to kill Gandhi first. Next up is secret level. Which is a anthology series, right? So I have no idea. I, I've been seeing it pop up recently. So you know how there's like love, death, and robots and that kind of stuff. They literally quoted in this trailer. <laughs> yeah, basically, it's just a uh, another anthology. So I'm pretty sure it's the same guys who actually no, yeah, it's just there. It's the same people. Could be good. Look, love, death, and robots was fucking great. I loved that stuff. And it looks like they're going to do... Because, like, they've got it quoted, you know, uh, God of War, Mega Man, and more. So, it clearly seems like they want to put a little, like, backstory stuff into some characters, which mm. could be fun. Or even just, okay, Basically, here's a game series. series. I want exactly. to do a small story in the background for for this universe. Yeah. Yeah. Which, which yeah, is, I'm okay with. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Especially because some of these universes definitely have space for some other... Yeah. ...stuff to happen that you could do... Yeah. They, they have, like, room for some more set dressing and that kind of mm. stuff. Right. Next up is Inzoi. Which is streaming Sims to me. Yeah. Like, is it from the same people? It's not by Max, as far as... Well, actually, uh, EA owns the rights to the Sims. Fair. Because they killed Maxim, who were the guys who made it. Yeah, it seems to be, like, sort of a relationship thing. Probably a little less Sims and more lifestyle like a life of, sim. Yeah, yeah. All right, not my cup of tea, but you know. no, absolutely not. But I know there's an audience out there; they want this. Oh yeah, no, they're probably like foaming at the mouth for this one. Next up is We Harvest Shadows, which is so much easier than harvesting light. I swear to God. I mean, you got to wait for light to get there. Shadows always there first. Exactly, waiting. A first-person farming horror allegory. Wow. <laughs> what? Yeah, that's what this is. Ho farming it's, horror? As far as I can tell, it's like part farm sim, part like horror game. Like, I'm vaguely intrigued by it just off yeah. that alone. <laughs> that, uh, that is enough to get me interested in this. Like, I don't know what's happening, but it looks weird. It kind of looks like you're some, like if you if the science was a good movie end game. Yeah. Well, science if you could manage the farm around the house. Yeah. <laughs> Next up is Helia. Is it Hella? Hella. I have no idea. It's H E L A. Yeah. <laughs> it's. 
Why does this remind and, you? And you know, the English language has no consistency on how letters are pronounced, so you just fucking guess. <gasps> Little mouse people! Alright, I'm already in, so... <laughs> what, what am I playing? Uh... Look, it's a mouse with a backpack whose backpack also has little mouse ears. Except it appears to kind of be a frog. A little bit, yeah. I'm assuming it's the, the buttons to hold it closed, but it's like, ah. D but no, oh, you haven't got to the bit in the trailer. <laughs> no. Alright, some Disney magic has escaped its way into the building. Oh, it is a frog. Nice! I get the... This game's giving me um, very, uh, what is it, It Take Two vibes? Yeah. yeah. Like, you're gonna need a co-op partner, and it'll be an interesting, like, little adventure. It looks really fun, and if they can get the swing mechanic right, like Spider-Man was, I'd be keen. Why do I... Like, Spider-Man. There's, like, three mice. There's three mice people. Why does it feel like they're not so much frog backpacks as a container for a parasite? Yeah. Maybe. Maybe. Maybe it's a horror game in secret. Yeah. I, I'm okay with it. It's that actually like, tending if to that's what, If that's what it was, I'd actually be even more impressed. Yeah. <laughs> uh, next up is Masters of Albion. Fucking Albion. Which, you know, appears to be another colony style game. Um, it's not for me. I suck at colony games. Like, my people die a lot. And quickly. I am a very bad leader in these colony games. The the voiceover for this trailer is about as much enthusiasm as I have for this game. It sounds like he just downed an entire bottle of like Valium. <laughs> yeah, kinda. Of. Like I could fall asleep to this uh, this voice. I kinda want him to do some readings of stuff just so I can now, <laughs> but Right. Next up is ARC Racers. Uh, Arc Raiders. Oh, Raiders. I, I actually sorry. wanted... I've been wanting this for a while because it's done by the people who did uh, the original Battlefield games. Oh. The, that studio, when they got gutted and, and taken over by EA, they fucked yeah. off, made their own dev studio, and this is their game. I was hyped it for it really until it, I found out it's uh, an extraction shooter, pretty much. Ah, oh, oh. damn it. Every time. Every time we think so, something's going to be fun. Uh, extraction shooter. God damn it. It's not so much like an open world extraction shooter as it is as run a gauntlet and then survive. Mm. Mm. I mean, if it comes to game, <clears throat> game Pass, I might pick it up, but... Yeah. Next up is No More Room in Hell 2. It's a zombie shooter. It's been a while since we had a zombie shooter. I say it's yeah, so much sarcasm. Like I mean, even even if you're not being sarcastic, there's better ones coming. Oh, yeah, definitely. Like, Killing Floor 3 is coming out pretty soon, like, early next year. It'll be like, I'd rather wait for that. Yeah. I don't want to burn... I don't want to fill up on bread when I have a good meal coming. Yeah. Next up is Road Craft. Uh, are we actively crafting roads? It's basically mud We're runners, except them. you could trick out the truck. Yeah. I mean, this could be an entertaining thing just to play, like, when zoning out. Yeah. I would make some dumb roads, though. Uh, I, I should not be in charge of civil planning. <laughs> Why is this road go for ages? Ah, oh, it, it's required to go around the uh, the terrain. <laughs> Don't look at it from above. It's just got a massive penis. Yeah. I mean, if you're into those sort of building games mm. go ahead it reminds me of like farming simulator and that kind of stuff yeah actually uh, this reminds me of um... Exile. oh hmm? shit I can't remember the game it was a, a strategy game a top down strategy game or you could go to a first person view to fly the ships or the tanks whatever it was um oh um crap I know the one you're talking me. about yeah you had like a okay, massive wait. carrier and then you had ships to shut off hmm. that but yeah 
We're just gonna scream it out at some point halfway through <laughs> the rest of these trailers, <laughs> like either me or me or Jondo, as we finally figure it out. Next up is Path of Exile Two. This, this is pretty. mostly here, like we know about it. We've seen some trailer footage for it, but this is for the release date. Ooh. Ah, neat. How long do we have to wait? I recall it's not a huge amount. Considering it's also uh, free to November play. fifteenth. That's not bad, actually. Like you know, still this year. Yeah, you know, another one of these to swing in and show Diablo how you actually fucking do it. Just hold the beer. I'm just really carrying keen a to command see, is like, that game it. I was thinking of. Ah, <laughs> nice. Um, I'm just really keen to see how they do with this because they spent <laughs> years working on the first one. I want to see what a sequel with all that knowledge pre baked into yeah. deliver. Yeah, definitely. And uh, any cos- any cosmetic you bought for the first game will carry to the second, which is pretty cool. Yep. Nice. Because they're not a shit company. Yeah. Hmm. Next up is the first Berserker. I don't know what this is, but it's pretty, and it has that weird anime cell shading, which is pretty okay. Like, it's done well. Yeah, I know, right. Probably it's going to be done well, and these guys have nailed it, so... Look... A lot of being an impersonator of the Souls franchise is mostly just having a game that hits the style quota. Yeah. Because that's all you really are improving upon. It's like, we've taken this, like, method and we're skinning something awesome on top of it. This is what we yeah. like. Next up is Sniper Elite uh, Resistance. Is oh, this a wait, whole new game I, or an expand alone or I think it's an expand alone. Because it looks very much like five, that last one they did. Yeah. Question is, do they have the super slow mo depth? They always do. Good. It's like it's been in the franchise since the first fucking yeah, game. It's the only reason I buy these games. It's the only I reason kind of anybody agree. buys these games. Look, the fact I can shoot Hitler in the testicle and watch it happen in slow motion is fucking hilarious. It is. And I like the fact that they kept putting... The, despite the fact that they would end up in wars and time zones that he didn't exist, I do love that they kept including at least one shoot Hitler mission. Yeah, yeah every time. Next up is Little Nightmares 3... I'm actually really glad that there's a third one. The first two were fun. Yes. Completely. Right, the style of these games is... Mm, chef's kiss. Mm. Just have to see if they can pull it off a third time. I... Yeah, they pulled it off really well with the second one. I was a bit concerned. Yep. Uh, but they did pretty well. Next up is Directive 8020. Is this like Order 66, but different? Okay, yeah, no, this is really just... Interesting. It's space horror. I love space <laughs> horror. But what flavor of space... Oh, it's shapeshifty space horror. Even better. I'm pretty keen. That... That looks fun. Sufficiently creepy, I approve. Next up is the trailer for Age of Mythology Retold, which is a uh, complete HD rebuild of the original Age of Mythology. Yeah. Basically, it's like a full redo. Yeah. Which is interesting, because they still kept the, like, the old style. Um, I mean, like, if it didn't, it wouldn't really feel like Age of Mythology, though, would it? Yeah, that is true. But it looks good, but also so very polygonal at the same time, but in a good way. Yeah. I, I like I it. Think it I fun. think they've made it so it looks like it can still run on an old potato. Yeah. Yeah. Except I know those smoke effects will grind my machine. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah definitely. <laughs> Look, I'm I'm picking this up. I spent far too many hours playing the original to not pick up this game. Next up is Flotopia. This sounds fun. Okay, I, it has me already considering it starts out with attention to everyone the world is ending. 
<laughs> it's a chibi apocalypse. <laughs> it really... I'm in. I don't know what this is, but chibi apocalypse sounds fun. <laughs> oh god, it's full of floating islands. This is already like ticking far too many boxes for me. <laughs> it's basically a farming sim. Seems like you can kind of do like a town as well, though. Sort of yeah. like maybe a more oh, can... advanced version of um, Animal Crossing. Yeah, you can build, like, islands and shit. Like, I hate how much I kind of want to play this game now. Is that a grenade that they're throwing? Yes, it is. Interesting. Yeah, it's kind of a weird trailer that gets slightly more interesting every couple minutes. I don't know what this acid trip is, but I think I'm buying it. So... You want it for the axolotl bus. I'm not gonna lie, that did help clinch the deal. Like, it's just, I was elming and iron until that axe level was like, yep, yeah, I'm in. Next up, this is very is... much Animal Crossing. Yeah, it really is. Yeah. yeah. Next up is AILA. Ayla. I'm guessing that's probably going to be what the uh, the character's name will be. It's obviously an acronym for something, but yeah. But the minute you can sound the, the an acronym out into a name, it's something. Yeah. yeah. I do not know what this is. Is it meant to be horror? Is it meant to be sci-fi? Is it First meant to be gothic? <laughs> yeah. So, if I recall, the idea is that it's... Um, they're playing a VR game and then something starts bleeding out. Hmm. So, yeah, it could be interesting. It, it looks entertaining. Be a fun Next horror. up is the trailer for the expansion pack to Starfield Shattered Space. Oh, well, look, and a thing I'm Tell how getting. enthused I am. The only is thing that would make this exciting if it was a complete re release after an overhaul of the entire fucking game. Yeah. Mm. Also, is it free? No, this oh, is no. the this then is the why would DLC I do it? you like... got with the the ultimate edition. Oh god, yeah. Which now they they are really stroking themselves off for these buggies, aren't after, they? After thinking well, about it, they have to because that if you buy the DLC right now and pre-order it, you get the buggy. Ah. Thinking about it, this whole DLC, like you'll probably spend. 30 bucks on the DLC and it'll still only have the first two missions of it. The rest you'll have to buy independently. Yeah. We've got to get the other piece of the DLC. Of course. Yeah, exactly. That's what the entire season pass is. It's just the next next uh, side quest of this. Alright, next up. It's already out, but it's fantastic. Black Moose Wukong. I'm loving this game. Yeah, it's really good. It's so much fun. Jesus when Christ. When we get to the, this month's might play, you, me and Swish have got a gush. Oh, yeah. <laughs> fine. But, yeah, this is its uh, its big launch trailer. It is out. If you like the look of it, buy it. I can honestly say I'm having an amazing time with it. What yeah. uh, what style of game is it? Because I've, I've got it on the wish list. It's an Aminari uh, kind of thing. To me, a, I remember like God of War is what it feels like. Most yeah, recent one. it's a character action game. Yeah, cool. a lot of people thought it was going to lean more towards a Soulsy game. No, no, it's pretty forgiving. A lot of more of it's about just doing cool combos and shit. Yeah, cool. it's my ideal level of a Souls game. I can still kill things. So yeah, no, would recommend. Next up is Starship Troopers Extermination. This has been popping up on my Steam for a while for a pre-order, I swear. Yes, same. Um, I but mean, it doesn't maybe, look very good. It looks very dated. Because yeah. Helldivers already did it better. Yeah, yeah, that is a good point. We got Helldivers at home, and for once, that's better. Yeah. yeah. Next up is Karen. 
can which seems uh, to be a climbing like thing. No, we we talked about this when we saw it last time. Since the Karens are the uh, the pile of stones you put at the top yeah. of the um of the hill. I mean, I might actually pick it up. I do kind of like these sort of like climby games. Hmm. I did play Duchamp. That was quite good. Yeah. Um, so I might actually pick this up. It looks kind of fun. It looks pretty chill. Next up, the Gone Beast. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> I'm sold. This is adorable. <laughs> yeah, I kind of figured you might like this one. Oh, I, I'm not even in the thing yet, but fuck. The comedy is what I want. Please tell me this is a reference to... No, damn. It actually is. Asymmetrical right. horror? No, asymmetrical multiplayer? <laughs> no, I think I believe it's full player co op. Oh, you actually get weapons and stuff. You gotta fight the beast. Okay, this looks like fun. Yeah, I know, right? And apparently there is a guy called Fabio in it. Next up is Monster Hunter Wilds. Yay! I'm actually... I love Look, Monster Hunter. This, like, the spider shit they do in there, like, the fucking thing jumping around, it's Blood Red Arena. Like, that's yeah. just the usual cool shit I expect out of Monster Hunter. <laughs> yeah. Like, I'm probably going to be picking this up. I love the Monster Hunter franchise. I'm happy to see that we have another biome. Yeah. Because the previous couple of trailers did everything in the desert. Now we're like, oh, there's a lush jungle biome as well. Hmm. I kind of assumed there would be others, but, like, they just hadn't shown it. Yeah, this looks very entertaining. Next up is Unknown 9 Awakening. What are this? It's a live action project. I oh. don't know. This looks very strange. It's. I think they're doing that, um. The thing they did with, uh. That one that had the uh, Quantum Break? Yeah. Yeah. It looks very much and like, like the, that. like the, um. Supreme Commander kind of like thing. It's like cutscenes might be live action. Yeah. It looks interesting though, but I like the styling of it. I might have a look at that one. Uh, next up is and 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 then uh, God, my... <laughs> I, I'm going to assume it's Enotria. Yeah, yeah. I'm probably wrong. Usually I only do bad words once in an episode. Fuck. <laughs> Usually there aren't this many bad words in an episode. This is an interesting looking game. I'm probably not going to be picking it up, but... It's a thing I'd probably grab in a sale. Yeah. It looks interesting enough to keep it on my radar if it popped up, but not... This trailer doesn't sell it. Yeah. Next up is Stalker 2, Heart of Chernobyl. I am skipping through most of this like at actual gameplay. It's going to be a lot of canned, unfortunately, because this is the gameplay reveal of some stuff, but they did it as an interview with a dev. Which is never a great thing, unfortunately. I love certain devs, but... They're not all magnanimous, kind of like your know, big presences. I don't know. I don't. I don't feel myself interested in. Man, I don't want to say this because it's more like in this case true. I don't really care what the dev has to say. Yeah. yeah. 
It's like your product will show for itself everything you have to say, so I don't need you here. But I will admit I have seen some interviews with devs about products that they've worked on that were very interesting. So. Yeah. I mean, it just looks like pretty stalker. That's I think that's all anyone wanted. Pretty much, yeah. A version of this game that doesn't hold together with hope. <laughs> I don't know. I never played the previous stalker. I'm probably not going to play this one. But good luck to those who enjoy it. That's fair. Next up is uh, Revenge of the Savage Planet, I believe is the next one. Yeah. They're also doing the live action thing. I can't remember if the first one had that. It's been a long it time since I played it. It didn't have it. I think they might have sort of embraced the sort of um, Devolver Digital Energy. Hmm. You can do some silly stuff around your actual product. Yeah. And I mean, I liked the first Savage Planet, so... Yeah, the first Savage Planet was it, really fun. It was a really, like, chill, just sort of, like, explore and, and yeah. collect things and make objectives. Nothing was too stressful. It was just mm. chill. Next one up is Mecha Break. Do we break Mecha? It's something I was really excited about until uh, I found out what it is. Yeah. This looks what? so cool until fucking Arena Shooter. Well, not really Arena oh, Shooter. Oh, that's right. Fuck, we talked about this one previously, didn't we? Yeah. Yeah. It looks so sick. It looks like like I've, I've had my, uh, like, ten yearly shot of Armored Core. Yeah. And I need a fix now. <laughs> <laughs> Armored Core sick got me back into mechs. Like, damn it. And it looks so pretty. It does. Next up is Street Fighter Six. More content for Street Fighter Six. I'm cool. always happy People for the Street Fighters to have more things. Like they eat well, they're doing pretty good. I mean, like, I don't play Street Fighter. Neither do I. It's just I'm more just happy that like the fighting game community keeps getting content yeah I like Evo I, they're pretty good next up Battle Fury City of Wolves guess what all content for fighting games I mean yeah again like the only fighting games I really played are like Budokai and the Dragon Ball ones yeah I said the beer and peanuts fighting games. Yeah, because they like after a certain point they let you fly around the arena as opposed to just being like locked side by side. This is yeah. just fighting game fan service. That's all it this is, yeah. appears to be. Have you never played a Fatal Fury game? <laughs> I played I played Fatal Fury two back on the Mega Drive. Ooh, yeah. Next up is new content for Naraka Blade Point, which is a Tomb Raider crossover. What what is Naraka? Blade it's a like a large arena PvP sort of like hero shooter game. Uh, hero uh, game. Okay, that explains why I haven't seen it. Like I'm not like Lara's actually a pretty good fit as mm. far as the crossover goes. That's fair. Lost Records, Boom and Rage is next, which is uh, one of those other things from Don't Nod, so I'm not that interested. Yeah, this is uh, the same group who did um, Life is Strange. I believe so. It feels yeah, very it's... Life is Strange, so it wouldn't surprise me. Yeah, it's not Either like way, a it's a you know, coming of age story, yada yada yada. Yeah. It's just not my jam. Next up is Hurdling. Hurdling! I, this looks entertaining. What is this? This reminds me of um, what was the the one that came after Shadow of Colossus, Last Guardian? Yeah, yeah. It reminds me of that. I don't know, it just seems like a game about a kid taking his herd of yaks across the countryside, which yeah. just kind of looks fun. It, it looks and the art pretty. style looks delightful mm. looks very entertaining I, I might pick that up actually 
Next up is the early access trailer for Delta Force Hawk Ops. Delta Force! I had the original Delta hey. Force and I really enjoyed it. <laughs> Unfortunately, I'm not really expecting much out of it. Like, oh, no. But. Modern shooters are modern shooters, is this? Yeah. Like, we started playing these games when they still had story. Next up is Predecessor. Ah, uh, was this the... the one that we were excited about until we found out it was a hero shooter? There were quite a few of those, so possibly. No, I think you're, you're thinking of um, Concord. Ah, oh, yeah. The one that had, like, real um, Guns of the Galaxy energy. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah, Concord. But, I mean, it's another arena thing. Looks like it's take, trying to take on Smite and Dota. Yeah, I mean, not my vibe, but, you know, there's definitely a market for it, so good on them. Yeah, pretty much. I believe the next... Rainbreaker was what the next one? Yeah. I'm not sure what this is. It's... So they got a unique art style. I was gonna say, yeah, like unique is the correct word. When it's a roguelite, and I don't know, I've kind of simmered on roguelites. Yeah, I've got a few I go back to every so often if I want something to turn my brain off to. But that's about it. Mm. Next up is the trailer for the um, DLC for Persona Three Reloaded. I didn't play Persona Three, so I don't care. No. Yeah, I don't think I have actually played one through. Oh, well, it's there if you like it. Yeah. Next up, Arena Blackout Infinite. What are this? It's another another military style shooter. I like skipping through. Is like, are there any supernatural elements? No, it's just shooting peeps. Uh, next up is a trailer for Dark and Darker for mobile. The hell is that? I almost thought you said Daka Daka. <laughs> <laughs> I wish. Yeah, much more, more. I'd wish I was playing some game about orc shooting people. Yeah, <laughs> that would be pretty good. Next up is Project Z Beyond Order. It's a zombie shooter. So, zombie shooter, uh, any other elements to it? You can I modify mean, your guns. Yeah. Modify your guns. Yeah. Apparently, you can modify the hideout or the community you're in. Uh, it's a zombie shooter. Yeah. Yeah, those those people that like COD zombies that want a little more customization. Cool. Good luck to you. It might be good. We, they really need to stop getting devs to do voiceover because these guys have been living this game for like years. They're dead to it. They're not excited anymore. Give, I hate to say it, but give us a fucking media hype guy for the actual reveal trailer, guys. Mm -hmm. Next up is no, it's the dev uh, rundown with Adam Fall, I think. Ooh. Yeah. Skip That's that one that had kind of Fallout in England vibes. Yeah. I'm pretty keen for this. This whole video really is someone good. just trying to loot shit from a room. <laughs> like, just... Yeah. I'm skipping through. It's just this guy beating another guy with a cricket bat. It's just... Yeah. I mean... Looks like fun, doesn't it? <laughs> it does. I, I kind of wish there was an actual trailer as opposed to people just talking over some very generic gameplay, but, you know, it looks fun. Next up is Linked Banner of the Spark. The old spark or just the spark? It should just be the spark. God damn it. This is an interesting art style. Yeah. Looks to be a third person co-op game. Yeah. Oh, 
Apparently uh, you are up, saving the future. Good for you. Next up is Monument Valley 3. Monument Valley 3. This is such a fun oh, puzzle it's these game. Ones. Yeah, yeah, I know, right? Monument Valley is great. I love these things. I am actually really happy uh, they have one coming now. Uh, perspective puzzler. Yeah. Yeah. They really played with a lot of those, like, um, the impossible staircase and the lot yeah, of Yeah, the mm. MC Escher worlds. Yeah. These really keen games. for that. Yeah, I I'm definitely Kind of fun this. when it's like, oh, hey, a puzzle game I'd completely forgotten how to get in a sequel? Fuck yes. No, oh, hell is yes. I'm in. I think that's it. It's HD trailers after that. Yeah. Yep, that's about it. I can't see anything else that's like, hmm. new. So yeah, that's uh, games actually doing on... some pretty decent things in there. Yeah. yeah, well, I mean, that's what I was saying. Like when you were like, "Ah, oh, games, I'm not going to buy." And some of them actually look like yeah. pretty good. Yeah, I was pleasantly I mean, surprised it's... about quite a pleasantly far out. Pleasantly Your surprised turn. about quite a few of those. Yeah, I mean, I think the one I was most like surprise for was the actually seeing what it was like playing the uh, Indiana Jones one yeah. yeah like that actually kind of made it look good like why did you not lead sooner with this There's these other half trailers you've been putting out are getting everyone worried yeah but no, I'm keen for a few of these actually um, yeah what was the the float one Floatopia I I may have checked like Steam to see if it was already <laughs> out like or up on there unfortunately it's not so I'm gonna have to try. Don't to worry. That. I'm sure I'll remind you about it later. Yay! On a coming this month. <laughs> Probably that seems yeah, to actually, be usually that's... when uh, when you remember a game you were waiting for came. Out. It's it's really useful but really bad for my wallet. So it's yeah, you know, it's great. Hey, I told you about Wukong, and you're playing it. And you're liking it. <laughs> that is true. I'm I'm playing a lot of it. All right. We are well past out past now. We probably should have made this whole episode this, not done the <laughs> 30 minutes of news. Oh, well, you get out a whole bunch extra of us this week. You're welcome. More fun have a you. good one. <laughs> Bye. See ya.